YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to undervolt your 5800X 3D. Now, you could probably use this method to unvault any normal Zen 3 processor, but there's really no point because you actually have the options in BIOS to do a PBO undervolt. Now, first handedly, this is actually a fantastic chip and been a really nice upgrade. What's great about these chips is RAM overclocking actually doesn't really matter at all. High end RAM kits don't matter, like they really did matter on normal Zen 3 chips. Um, and it's just been a really nice upgrade. So I got this chip from my 5950X at a really mean, aggressive overclock with speeds and timings on my 5950X. And I still saw quite a nice gain going to this chip. But this is just a really nice chip because it's already, you get the best out of the best out of the box. You don't need a high-end RAM kit to get really good frames in games. And it's just good to go. Now, the only problem with these chips is they run very hot right you want a really good cooler with these chips okay undervolting can help quite a lot now here's an example i'm a little crazy i got a 5800x 3d in the gaming pc and the streaming pc you're probably thinking why i wanted identical pcs one has the 3090 in it which is my streaming pc and one has a 6900 xt in it so in the future when i do game benchmarks and stuff like that i can actually compare i have the same monitors too so when i use my latency tool i can actually compare one pc versus the other you know like amd versus nvidia drivers type of thing but anyway what i'm trying to get at is why am i telling you this now because this is supposed to be an undervolting video i'm going to show you guys how to undervolt it on my streaming pc i actually started using x264 for streaming x264 slow it's pretty damn incredible and it actually looks better now, a lot of people say x uh nvidia nvenc new looks better and I would agree to a point when it comes to just the game, not your webcam, and also when it comes to being limited with Twitch's bitrate. Um, anyway, long story short, it actually looks way better for me to use X264. So that's using the CPU to stream. So I'm using my 5800X 3D to uh, render to stream at 1080p um, at 8000 bitrate. Now, it's not really a CPU that's meant to be for rendering. These run really hot because it's a 3D cache. Um, it's not really ideal. I would be better off keeping my 5950X and uh, using that instead. And it would run a lot cooler. But I wanted identical PCs. Now, that was undoable until I was able to do an undervolt. Well, it was doable, but it was hitting about 90, 90 plus degrees with my Arctic 360. Doing the undervolt made it about 81. So a lot more of a safe kind of space area now as far as gaming performance with the undervolting um on my gaming pc from what i found um it made about roughly 10 degree difference too but what was really interesting is i found when i would play games it would actually boost the cores a lot more frequently whereas before it would kind of hit around the 70 75 sometimes and the core speeds would jump down a little bit doing the undervolt made it kind of sit around like 60 to 65 and the the boost clock would always sort of hold and it wouldn't jump up and down trying to kind of down clock itself because of temperatures because kind of the way these chips work even zen even zen 3 the cooler you keep them the higher they'll boost and so that's what we're sort of going for here now anyway i'll stop raving on about this ship in my experience let's show you guys how to kind of undervolt this thing so there'll be links in the description down below okay right here is a nice little guy that someone's put together on github now i went through this guide and i'm like there's going to be a much easier way rather than using task scheduler to automate the process of undervolting now we can't undervolt or overclock in BIOS, but we can actually undervolt with software with this uh, chip. Some lovely person created something called PBO2 Tuner, and that's what we're going to be using here today. I'm going to link this guide anyway. It's it's not it's a nice little read. He shows you how to um, automate the process every time the PC boots uses the software to undervolt it. Um, but I just found this really annoying. I didn't want to use task schedule. I found a better way and an easy way. I'm going to show you guys here. I also found a cool thing with the windows alerts to pop up to say that it's done. I don't use any of that anyway. So that's a link and here's where the file came from. I believe that link will be in the description too. And just in case this ever gets taken down or disappears from the internet, I'll put it in my Google drive. So you could grab it from there if you want. Also, I've put it in the other folder. Okay. It's just called PBO2 tuner here. But anyway, let's download it. And I'll show you guys how to use it. So that's the guide and he links you straight to the web page on where to get it for 
from there's two versions there's a debug cli and there's another one um, we just want to grab the debug cli because uh, the other one won't allow you to add command lines or launch options or task scheduler options to automate the process so we're just going to go ahead and get debug cli but like i said you guys can get it from my google drive if you like anyway we've gone ahead and we've downloaded that let's go and open that and let's put that on the desktop for now so I'll just drag that straight to the desktop and I'm going to close all of this. Right. Debug CLI. Let's go ahead and extract it, guys. I don't care what you want to use to extract it. That's up to you. Okay. And then that's our program here. Let's call this folder PBO2Tuner. So I'm going to call this folder PBO2Tuner. Okay. And let's put it in our program files 86 folder just so things are sort of nice and clean. So I'm going to cut this. So just to show you guys, PBO Tuner, I've renamed it and they're the files, they're ready to go. I'm going to cut and I'm going to go to 86. I'm going to paste it right here and it should be right here. PBO2 Tuner. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Let's make two shortcuts, okay? So a shortcut and a shortcut, okay? And then I'm going to paste those to the desktop. All right. Let's name one of them PBO2 Tuner. That's one of our shortcuts. And let's name this one PBO Tuner with the Undervolt. Because you guys are going to see, we're going to actually use uh, kind of launch options. You know how you do with the game to do the Undervolt? I'm going to call this one Undervolt. And I'll probably put it in brackets so we don't get confused. All right. So how does this thing work? It's pretty straightforward. Now, we're using the DB debug CLI version so we can actually automate the process every time we reboot the PC which is what we want but let's have a bit of a look I'll open hardware info here okay so we can see sort of the, the core speed and the temps right and I'm going to open CPU Z just because I don't want to we can look look at the voltage here but I'll just open CPU Z so we've got something else to read the CPU voltage all right okay and let's open a little bit of prime 95 and before I run that Oh, I'll just run it straight away. That's all good. Um, we'll go ahead and open PBO Tuner. All right. And here's where you can actually undervolt the core. So roughly under load. It's going to take a little while for Prime95 to kick in. It looks like we're doing 1.26 volts. There we go. Now it's sort of kicked in. As you can see, it's kind of boosting. And see how it's kind of jumping up and down? Now, Prime95 isn't really the stress test to use for this chip because the 3D cache runs really hot, let me tell you. As soon as AVX kicks in, it's going to hit like thermal limits straight away for this thing. But we will just use Prime95 right now with a normal blend test just to show straight off the bat really quickly what it's roughly doing. Okay, we're roughly getting like 72 degrees and it's roughly doing 1.25 volts. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. This isn't a chip you really want to be using AVX with. And just like I was saying with the streaming rig, um, really shouldn't be like using X264 for, for streaming with that chip, but I've made it work. Um, be much better off with the 5950X, but I sold that to buy the 5800X3D. Anyhow, so basically simply here, you would just put like an undervolt here. So like as a, as a, as a base, I'm going to say for most of you out there, minus 10 is going to be safe. Um, if you're feeling really lucky, you could try minus 20 or minus 30. And then if you really want to, you could do per core instead of all of them exactly the same. And I would highly recommend using a proper stress test to individual T test the stability of each core. Now you could probably use OCCT for that. Um, if you don't want to go down that like rabbit hole of trying to find the individual undervolt per core or you can't really be bothered to stress test for you guys i'd recommend just doing like minus 10 and most chips should be able to do that fine go do your thing play your games see if you get in any pc shutoffs where the pc just randomly shuts off whether that be under load playing a game or even just on the desktop that can happen just be randomly doing nothing on the desktop and it can shut off um i my 5950X, uh, 5950X did that. I, I was able to do like a really nasty minus 30 under volts um, and it would pass stability tests, but then idling on the desktop uh, because it also does the idle voltage too. It would randomly shut off. So I'd end up dialing that down and finding a sweet spot. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to say for you guys is if you don't want a headache, but you want a little bit of an undervolt to get a little bit more out of the CPU, just do minus 10 
do your thing, play your games, see if you get any shutoffs, see if you get any blue screens. And if the blue screens have like, just Google the code at the bottom. If it's CPU related, you know, it's probably not really working or if you're getting any crazy game crashes. For the really nerdy guys, you probably want to go all out and test each individual call with OCCT and instability and stuff like that. But anyway, I just want to show you guys sort of how it works. So let's just start with a minus 20. Um, it's really annoying. As you can see, we kind of have to paste it in here like that each time. And then this doesn't get reapplied on startup. So we just go ahead and we'll apply that. Once we've applied that, you could actually close the program. It doesn't matter. It's actually applied. Um, and it actually uses like a ring driver to do that. I'll show you really quick. Just using auto runs here, I'll just show you guys. Uh, it should be in here somewhere. There's like a ring driver. Can't find the specific one right now, or I can't remember. It might actually be this one, but anyway, regardless, um, let's continue on. So now if I go ahead and like open it up, right, we've got it closed now. Like if I open it up, you'll see that it's applied. So once you've applied it, it won't reset until you restart the PC. So it doesn't matter whether I leave this open or close it right now because we've already applied it. To reset it, you just simply hit reset, okay? And then we'll reopen it again and see how there's just nothing there. So we want to do minus 20 just so we can see like an actual difference and see if we see like a, a difference straight away in Prime 95 and with the um, voltage and also with the temperatures because that's kind of the whole point of this keeping the temps down so the cpu boost higher and then you're going to get a little bit more performance out of the chip so i'll just wait for prime 95 to kick in and we'll see what minus 20 has done on all cores so i believe we had to wait it was like a couple of maybe it was like 30 seconds there we go so see straight away um it seems to be boosting maybe a little bit more consistently and we're doing about 10 degrees lower here and the voltage is 1.16, so that undervolt is working. So awesome. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, you might want to do stability stress test to find the good number, but most of you guys should be fine with minus 10. Um, you know, what one chip can do, another chip won't necessarily do, and it's called silicon lottery at the end of the day. But I just wanted to show you guys. Now, let me show you how to automate this process because it can be quite annoying to have to reapply this every time you reboot the PC. Now, like in that guide, um, he was showing you to use task scheduler. Now that's just way too annoying and complicated. Like I'm not gonna bother using task scheduler, okay? We've got another shortcut here, right? So let's right click this shortcut, go properties, okay? And right here, we can actually add in the command line here under target. All right, go to the very end. All right, so not here, I'll go to the very, very end. All right, now after the little um, quotation marks, press, press a space and then go minus 20, another space, minus 20, another space, minus 20. And you need to do that eight times because we have eight cores on this CPU, right? We have eight cores on this CPU, so we need to do it eight times. So how many times have I done that already? Got one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Apply. Okay, now let's press OK. Now let's just check again to make sure that we did that correctly. Having a bit of a look here. Here we go. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now let's open PBO Tuner, the normal one, not the one we made the launch commands with. All right. It's completely reset. There's nothing here. So I'll open it again to check. It's completely reset. There's nothing here. Now, if we open this, right, what should happen is it should pop open and then close out. So it's going to apply that undervolt straight away, right? Now, if I open PBO tuner, the normal option, you see how it's applied? It's already done. I'll reset it. Let's open PBO tuner again. There's nothing there checking our little launch command shortcut there. Okay, if I run it, pops up, goes away, applies it. Let's go back into the normal, done. So all we need to do right now, okay, I'm gonna press reset here just to show you guys when I, that this works when I restart the PC. 
put this in your uh, start menu shortcuts, okay? So the, here's the link here. You can paste it in the address bar. My PC's name's administrator. You'll have a different PC name. Just put this shortcut in here in your start menu. So it's there uh, ready for you to use if you just want to open it up normally. And then there's a startup folder, okay? And the startup program folder is this address here, okay? Once again, you'll need to change administrator to your PC's name. Let's just go ahead and put PBO tuner in here. For just this video, I'm going to copy paste rather than cut and paste. So we've got it in your start menu programs. Now it should technically technically come up in your, if we go to apps, startup apps, and it should pop up here as you can see here. We've got it right here, okay? Now let's open PBO Tuner. I just want to show you guys that this works. We'll press reset. Nothing's there. Let's go restart the PC. We'll restart the PC and we'll open it up and to see if it's actually there. But you guys will probably sometimes see when you restart the PC um, and you go to the desktop, there'll be that little thing that comes up and then goes away. So I just found that the kind of to be the easiest way to go ahead and do that. All right, the PC's just booted. We'll just wait a little bit. waiting and then we there it is did you see that there boom it, it, it did it on startup and it applied it okay let's open normal ppo tuner all right go ahead and open that and as you can see it's applied here so i found that to kind of be the easiest way to do um and i've been wanting to do this video for a little while and it is actually useful because these chips run really hot even if you have a really beast cooler on the thing and undervolting it does make it run cooler it does make it boost higher and that is definitely beneficial as long as it is stable so if you want to go anything more crazy past minus 10 uh, you guys are gonna have to do some stress tests anyway guys i have an optimization service over on twitter and there's links below too if you're interested in me working on your pc i do stream very often over on twitch playing lots of games come say hi throw a sub give me a little bit of support i appreciate you guys subscribe and like if you haven't already i'll see you guys in the next one bye